What's up, sons? It's Blind Run with Sun Attack once again, and I have a heat problem. Well, it's coming up on summer here, and my GTX 1063 gigabyte rig has a couple GPUs that are running too hot. So I'm going to show you guys exactly what those GPUs are because I have different manufacturers and show you which one you might actually want to purchase. And the other thing we're going to do is take the two that are running hot. They're both from the same manufacturer. We're going to take those two and we're going to go ahead and hopefully resolve it by installing some new thermal paste and we'll see what happens. So stick around. Alrighty, welcome back. So it's going to get a little dark here, but I'm going to show you guys on this screen. I have Hive OS running. And as you can see here, the top two, which is uh, the GeForce GTX 1063 gigabyte, they are running at 81 and 82C, respectively. And it's interesting what's going on with the power consumption. It's not reporting correctly. One's at 117 and one's at 75. Not sure what's going on there. We are mining Raven, which is pretty hard to go ahead and get good numbers on unless you're mining pretty consistently and then track it on the pool side, but we can go over that in another video topic. I'm going to just walk you guys out here. This is basically, you're going to see a big mess because I just got back from a trip as well as, well, I got kids. So we're going to go out here and I got the mining rig basically over here, sitting here waiting for me to work on it. And so if you take a look here, as you guys saw, it was slots one and two. I have four cards here. I have uh, two of the EVGA and two of the MSI Aero. They both cost about the same. They're both single fan cards. So nothing crazy. They should be cooling about the same, but you can see under here actually, the heat sink on the MSI Aero actually has some copper piping. So that's the big difference in the cooler design. We're going to see if we can at least fix it. And then you can always go by the, we're on 01 and 02. This one's actually a dead one. I had that card pulled out for something else, but regardless of that, you can see these are the first two in the slot and they go to these EVGAs, which are running way too hot. So in my opinion, and I'll link the, the cards down below. I would pick up the arrows over the EVGAs personally. I'm just going to hit the power. I'm going to shut it down. I'm going to pull these cards out real quick. Okay, still recording. Perfect. So, oh, I am out of juice in my deal. So let me get an old-fashioned screwdriver. Now what I've started doing is I get more cards is I've started splitting the rigs up into um, single rigs. So these are all the 1063 gigs I have. So they're all on this rig. And if I buy more, I'll put them on this rig. If I have 10 ATIs, those go in a different rig, so on and so forth. It makes it easier, of course. And then if you could always get the same manufacturer, it makes it even easier for settings and so on. But we didn't get that in this case, of course. So there's that one. I'm just gonna pop this one out. And luckily Hive is pretty, pretty good, so I'm gonna go ahead and just pop this back up and let it continue mining Raven while we fix this because no reason to waste the additional power that I already have, right? That would be silly. So uh, here we go. Let's go do it. We got, we got a couple cards here to work on. So, so there, yep, that'll work right there. Good enough. So you'll see here I have a couple thermal paste options. I'm, I hope we have enough thermal paste. I want to do one with the MX4 and one with the GLID Extreme and compare them. We'll have to see what happens with that. Uh, taking one of these apart, I have not taken this specific model apart before, but I assume it shouldn't be that difficult. We will probably have to remove more than I am anticipating per usual. It does look like the front has just a clip here, right there. And we might have to pull these off. I don't think so. The DVI, I don't think we'll have to pull this whole plate off, but maybe we will. So let's go ahead and actually pull it off. I have for some of the smaller screws, these little kits, 
They're the tiny turners. They're pretty great. Um, these might actually even be too small. No, nope, perfect. Look at that. The first thing we're gonna do is just take off the core back plate. Well, not the back plate, but the four screws off the back and see if this cooler will come off without having to pull the shield off. Make sure you don't lose the spring. And it does look like the washer itself has some adhesive on it, keeping it to the back of the card. So you shouldn't have to worry about that. And the other thing to note here is you'll actually see that there's four holes further out for a different mount. So I would assume that they use the same card, but a different uh, mount there. So that's actually just gonna come straight off. You just need to remove those four screws and then get the fan off and you'll expose the die. And as you can see here, actually, and we'll try to bring it up to y'all, it's missing some on the die, missing some thermal paste there, and it's pretty yucky. So since it's missing that, that could be part of our problem on this particular one. I'm gonna get some alcohol and I'll be right back. Now it does appear I am all out of alcohol. And so we're just gonna wipe this off and try to get as much of it off as I possibly can. And if we have to redo this later, we will. I suppose, I'd rather not, but just get all the old paste off the top of the die. The side is not as much as long, it doesn't matter as much as long as it's not above the die here, because this is the portion we're trying to cool off, of course. Now, the reason I'm not actually gonna show you guys how to use liquid metal is because we are mounting these cards vertically and not horizontally, which means it would have some bleed. And if you see these little uh, pieces of metal, which are caps all around the die here, if you got any Tim on any of those and it leaked down and, and uh, made contact, you would short out the, die, the chip and then you would have a lot more issues. So I'm not going to recommend it. Of course, it's up to you. If you do decide to do it, get some, some coating that will allow you to are we all out of MX4? We might be all out of MX4. We are. Let's see if we're out of GC Extreme. Okay, so we're only using GC Extreme today. Now, in typical fashion, I would say don't spread it out, but because we're on such a small die, I'm going to spread it out. Because as we saw, it, there might be an uneven screw down that's happening that's making it not connect on all sides. I'm just using a card here. You can use an old credit card. Some pastes come with a little tool. In fact, I believe the GC Extreme does, but I don't know where mine is right now. And so I am going to spread it, but you don't necessarily always do that. Usually you can do a B-sides and then hope that when you uh, put it on across the board that it, that it uh, spreads out properly but I'm not gonna trust it to spread out properly here. Okay, so that should be pretty decent coverage and at this point, I'm just gonna throw the cooler back on, making sure we plug the actual fan in, which can be the tricky part here. And once we've done that, we can flip it over and screw it down, line it up again. I'm trying to line this notch up, there we go. And now we will go ahead and remount it. I just want to get the screw started, but I'm using the screwdriver itself to put weight onto the spring so I can get it started. It's a little hard to do it with your fingers to get it started to push the spring down. But we do not want to fully tighten at this point because we want to do a cross pattern on the tightening down of it. So now we're gonna go in a cross pattern couple turns a piece and this hopefully will help the rest of the thermal paste spread out evenly while filling any imperfections between the block and the die. Keeping in mind of course this will void warranty especially if you take one of these stickers off like you just saw here. 
And so you don't want to do this if it's still under warranty necessarily, especially if you're using it for mining purposes. If it goes out due to heat, then you're still under the warranty, so that'll be okay. However, if you're out of warranty, uh, to improve the longevity of your graphics card, replacing the tin would be advisable. Now this one's quite a bit worse. It also has a lot of dust. I've had this one much longer. So, wow, that's a lot of dust. I'll get my air can here. Okay, and at this point, we're gonna clean off the die again. And this one was, was really bad. There was not, it was definitely not full coverage. And apply some more paste on this one. Hopefully I have enough. Looks like we'll be getting just enough. That's actually too much, but spreading it out will fix that here. Maybe it wasn't too much. Maybe it just looked like it. We should be able to spread this out enough. There we go. And at this point, we'll just remount this. I want to make sure that I line that up better this time and then flip it over. Second time's always easier, as you guys can tell. So just like with anything else in life, practice makes perfect. Now the G-Lid GC Extreme fades a lot more than something like a thermal paste or the MX4 thermal paste. And so you want to keep in mind that if you're going to use the GC Extreme, you probably have about a six month time frame before needing to replace it again. So just keep monitoring your temperatures if you're going to choose it. Now, it conducts a lot better. And so that is the advantage of it. The disadvantage of it is that it needs to be replaced more often. Uh, the earliest I've seen it kind of decompose and need to be replaced is about three to four month time frame. Six months to a year is definitely pushing it, so I wouldn't recommend it. There we go. We're just going to uh, pick them up and take them in here and hook them up and see if we got better temperatures now. Fingers crossed. I still don't think we'll be as good as the MSI. And that primarily is just due to the fact that the MSI does have a much better cooler on it. But hopefully we'll get out of the 80s. That's the goal here. So I'm going to turn the system back off. Once again, we've done tests on these PCIe risers here. These are not good ones. They are version 006, but the thing is, is you don't want to be powering them like I have them powered. But I'm sure you guys have either already seen my disclaimer on that and so on. These, this was part of my test system when testing that. And the 1063 gigs have never had an issue with this particular power setup, but a lot of cards do. So I'm gonna just put the disclaimer out there not to use the SATA to Molex 4 pin. So we're gonna go make sure they spin back up in Hive here. And then we're gonna take a look at how much we gained in or lost in temperature. We'll have to give it a little bit to run, of course, before we can know for sure how much it's going to be. Right here, we'll just throw this over here. And so what I'm hoping for is at least a 5C drop. That would put us out of that 80C range. And you're getting a little, it's kind of fun because you're getting a little bit of a, 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 all my mess. As you can see, we just, that I just literally unpacked everything last night and went straight to streaming. So that kind of was, uh, Part of the problem there. I'm going to F5 for refresh, make sure we're back online. Um, they are significantly cooler already. Um, as you can tell here, we're at 47C on boot up. Of course, we aren't quite mining yet. They are running at a much higher reported power consumption, which doesn't make much sense to me because it shouldn't be. So we might have to look into that as well. Okay, so we're starting to spin up here. As I hit refresh, you can see here that we are back to full temperature load on the bottom two. It looks like the one we did in the top slots hitting 79, we might not have solved it at all here at this point. 
it does look like it's at 109 watts and it's back to 82. Second one is right around 78 C, 79. It's going back up pretty rapidly as well. Yep, and it's back to 81 C. Okay, so what we did didn't work. If you guys want to replace your thermal paste, that's how you can do it. Obviously we have a bigger issue and that bigger issue with the EVGA GTX 1063 gigabyte is going to straight up be that it doesn't have enough cooling potential even though that block does have a copper core. It doesn't have any copper tubing to help dissipate the heat. It also doesn't cover any of the memory modules so that's all being passively cooled and it doesn't seem to gain any improvement with the thermal paste swapped out. So the only thing that we can do now is I will actually go ahead and order some liquid metal. I'm out currently because I just did a couple 8700Ks. I'm gonna get some liquid metal on the way and then we're just gonna get some anti-conductive uh, coating that we'll put around the rest of the PCB to go ahead and protect it. So this is part one of the fixing our GTX 1063 gigabytes from EVGA's temperature problems. I was hoping I was at least gonna get some results today, but hey, you get to follow along with it. So failed, we failed, but we will succeed. Hit the sub if you're interested in seeing the, the follow up to this video and I'll see you next Tuesday.